Hello, welcome to Anson Griffith's occasional series in YouTube tutorials. Today we'll be looking at a uh, man with the U-test uh, for Likert scales. So, just by way of brief introduction, uh, a non-parametric test is usually used uh, when the data is not normally distributed or the data is not continuous. Now I know in the statistical world there are pros and cons about whether a Likert scale is whether you use a parametric or a non-parametric test, but just my own viewpoint, and I think with the, I won't say the vast majority, but with a reasonable majority, people would go for the Man Whitney. So if you were writing this up, it would be important to say that you know, you used a Man Whitney a non-parametric test. So this advantage is just to promote the advantage. This advantage is it's not that sophisticated, and its power, that's its ability to discern between accepting the null hypothesis and rejecting the null hypothesis isn't that great. But, I mean, if there's a big uh, difference, it will um, tell you. So, just to say, I did an Excel implementation uh, task there, and if that's too long or you couldn't be bothered typing it in, if you do a search for uh, my channel, that's Optiplex17, you'll find it. So I made up some data here. I made up a Likert scale, and you know you had year one intake, and you've divided the class more or less into, and one half of the class did problem-based learning, and the other half of the class did a traditional teaching method, and at the end of the year you did a number of uh, you sent out the questionnaire, and one of the questions was your know, your core satisfaction. One not at all satisfied, two slightly satisfied, three moderately satisfied, four very satisfied, and five extremely satisfied. Okay, so standard stuff, and th you got this data here. Okay, now I'm not going to do it in Excel because it's just you. Know, I mean, I did it, but it's a bit of a pain, so I'm going to use an online calculator. Now, bef just be sure before I online calculator, I had the data here, and I. copied and pasted the data into Excel and then what I did was I found I'll find it in a sec I found the online calculator here that's uh, I wonder okay you might just be able to read the uh, thing there but any online one will do and f if I just reset this I had it done before I did it if I just reset it and if I go to the Excel version of events, I can copy and paste the numbers in. If you copy and paste from PowerPoint, for some odd reason, it won't work. But when you copy and paste from the Excel, now just in case I'm going too quick, you can copy and paste from PowerPoint into Excel and then copy and paste from Excel into the online calculator although in all probability you would record the data in Excel anyway so there's there's no problem so there's the data that looks like a mistake it looks like I didn't copy it or I did something wrong okay just check that I might delete that one there I might paste it. That looks much better. So population one, population two. The significance level. That's the the strength of the test. Now the 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 at a one percent significance level, your chance of rejecting the null hypothesis is very small. I'll talk about that in a second. And at five percent, at least there's some chance of rejecting the null hypothesis. It didn't actually state that it's in the Excel one. The null hypothesis is there is no difference between the median of population one and the median of population two. We're not testing means, we're pop testing medians, and the median is the guy in the middle. If you arrange numbers in a ranking order, the mark in the middle. So that's what we're looking at. So we're testing at a 5% significance level, and we're going for a two tailed hypothesis. So, in other words, what that's saying is the null hypothesis is. Uh, the two medians are the same and the alternative hypothesis is the two medians are not the same we get the online calculator to do it okay now 
the online calculator is very nice to us. It gives us a Z ratio, so, so what it can do is you can convert your answer into a normal distribution. And for those uh, that are familiar with uh, normal distribution, the cutoff point is plus minus 1.96 and minus 1.96. So any value between plus 1.96 and minus 1.96, you accept HO, anything outside plus 1.96 or minus 1.96, you reject HO. So if we look at the Z version of events, uh, we get a Z value of 1.44, so that lies between minus 1.96 and plus 1.96. Now it would be dangerous to take the Z ratio in this case, because usually you're looking for um, 20 in each uh, population to quote a Z, because the the more you take, the more approximates the more it approximates to the normal distribution. In this particular case, I would prefer to go with the U value because the the population sizes are relatively small. The calculator, the online calculator, gives us a value of 42. The critical value is 33. So what it's saying is, it's there in front of us. The result is not significant at p. 0.05. So in other words, we have no evidence to reject the null hypothesis. In other words, the median for the two are the same. Okay, so hope that helps. Thanks very much.